Hi there. My name is Andre, and this is my bike. And I am going to give it a nice chain clean using a uh, Kitten Max device. Uh, it's a device I got from uh, one of the big European online retailers. Uh, and it seems nifty, and I've done it once before, uh, but when I was doing it uh, once before, I noticed that there were no YouTube videos uh, showing how it actually worked. Uh, so I thought it would be cool to actually show you how it does work in detail. Um, I've got the device here, I've got uh, some chain cleaner, uh, and uh, this is my uh, 2008 uh, FZ1 uh, bike. I will go uh, on a trip on this bike in, uh, well, tomorrow. Uh, I'm going on a nine-day trip around the Arctic Norway, Arctic Norway and Finland, uh, up to North Cap. And uh, before that I decided to give this bike a nice uh, chain clean. Uh, the chain is not in terrible condition, um, but it is a little bit grungy because I was um, riding kind of on a uh, sandy trail a few weeks ago and then I went on an about six, seven hundred kilometer uh, round trip to Riga and back. Um, so it definitely could use, I oiled the chain afterwards, but it definitely could use a thorough clean because I only kind of slightly sprayed it down a little bit before. Okay, so first thing we want to do, of course, is to put the bike on the center stand. Unlocking the front wheel, I am making sure that the bike is in neutral, putting it down on the central stand, tilting it just a little bit until I feel the second part of the stand on the other side catch, and then I'm putting my entire weight on the bike, and as I'm putting my entire weight on this lever here, on this lever here, I am uh, putting my hand on the back handrest here, passenger handrest, and I am uh, pulling slightly up, but I'm uh, pulling only with my hand, not with my back. So the idea is you only use your weight and a little bit of muscle power, definitely never use your back for this. This is the chain. And here I have the Ket and Max device. I also have a can of chain cleaner. It's actually spray-on chain cleaner. I could use it just uh, just as uh, spray onto the chain, uh, but I want to use the uh, brush uh, to to check the uh, well to show you how the Kit and Max works, and it works fine. It's a little bit uh, sort of fiddly, but it works fine. And I also have this classic kind of chain crunch brush uh, with me, and I have a cloth, and I have rubber gloves because rubber gloves is something that you're definitely going to need. Okay, so here's what's inside the Ket and Max. It's already been kind of grungy a little bit. Right, and one more thing that I forgot I needed is this can, well, glass jar. Um, it's just something I had at home. It had some, uh, used to have some juice and stuff, in, um, fruit stuff in it, uh, veggie stuff in it, uh, but it will uh, catch the dirty stuff coming off the chain, the dirty chain cleaner. Right, so this, this is the main part of the Ket and Max. Um, I've used it once, so it's already dirty and it's already adjusted, but inside of it um, are these brushes. Uh, these brushes here, they come off. Um, I should probably put on the rubber rubber gloves. Fingers are already a little bit dirty, but they will get a lot more dirty afterwards. It's definitely going to be grime involved in this. So there are brushes inside the Kit and Max, uh, which you can uh, take out. They just uh, slide out uh, like this. And these things need to be cut down to size. Uh, now they're basically cut down. You put the uh, Ket and Max uh, back here on the chain here, and you mark out. Actually, you can just—they're um, white. They come as uh, just 
plain white, they're dirty now, uh, but it comes plain white, and you can just uh, run them along the, um, uh, run the entire box along the back of the chain, along the back of the sprocket here, and it will show you where the white part gets dirty, and then just take a, a set of scissors and you slip, uh, snip them. Uh, and you want to basically uh, make sure that the brushes uh, go as as far as the inside uh, of the ring, the inside X of the ring. You don't want them to get on the rollers, but it just needs to reach the inside X of the ring. So we have this thing. This thing basically then goes onto the chain. Um, there are two parts on top, one part on the bottom. The two parts on top are where the um, cleaner, uh, cleaning agent goes in. Uh, and the one part on, on the bottom here is where it goes out. You can also put some cleaning agent uh, in here in this bottom nozzle um, and that will basically spray it uh, or, um, on both sets of brushes, uh, top and bottom, and that just gives it a more thorough clean if your chain is in a really, really bad condition. Uh, right now we are just going to uh, put this thing onto the chain, like so. and snap it into place and then use the rubber here to attach it. Uh, next step are these hooks. Uh, there's this, uh, yeah. So there's a hook here with a piece of rubber, a uh, piece of string. This is elastic string. Uh, the elastic string goes through uh, this sort of thing here. Uh, there are th uh, three ends, uh, three holes on each end. Um, the chain, uh, the hook, basically just attaches to any kind of hard point on the bike. Um, actually, you can even, I oh, can even do it like this. You can have, so there's two hooks. Let me actually show you this. I've only done this once before, so you'll have to excuse me. So there's two hooks. Um, they're attached really short here, just because of the way my, my bike is set up. There's plenty of string. I uh, can use some kind of uh, hard point further on. So big uh, one goes over there. Small one goes over here, either on the bottom or on the top. And the idea is that you have to make sure, so this is a neutral. So this is wrong. So this actually should not happen. Let's try it like this. Yeah, that's much better. I'll hold it a little bit. So the idea here is to have this entire assembly kind of not tilted up or down, but uh, to be exactly kind of in the middle here. Um, so it will stay kind of basically uh, parallel to the chain as the chain passes through it. Okay, now my uh, jar with Actually, some mold in it should have been thrown out a long time ago, so now it will be. Um, so this bit, so there's different bits of tubing. This bit of tubing goes on the bottom. It's uh, the thickest tubing there is. Uh, it goes on the bottom and it basically points to the, uh, the jar. Um, could use a taller jar, but that's fine. Um, now, I could use this thing to put the, uh, uh, the cleaning agent in. And if you're using some kind of kerosene or whatever to um, clean it out, uh, to clean your chain, if you're using actual liquid, then that's uh, one way to do it. The other way to do it is to use uh, this little attachment. And basically that's, kind of you can use that to put some uh, cleaner, um, spray some cleaner or some other stuff in here. So, I have my cleaner. There's a rubber bit on the end with a hole in it. I can stick this through the hole and just spray it so that the cleaning liquid uh, chain cleaner goes inside. And then I just rotate it like this. And that's really all I need to do.
as I'm doing this, the brushes are brushing the chain. Actually, maybe this is not optimal. Like I said, I only done this once before. So let me do this like they recommend. And we have this thing here, this bottle with the screw top. And this goes on to here. And now here, um, the advantage of this thing, I'm spraying the chain cleaner into the bottle. Uh, the advantage here is that you can use basically like any kind of chain cleaner. Um, a liquid chain cleaner is probably going to be cheaper than this um, aerosol stuff. This aerosol stuff is fairly expensive. Um, a lot of people use stuff like WD-40, I guess. Um, I honestly don't have a good idea of how much I'm supposed to be using, but I use this much. And so let's just put this on here, twist this on, and then I am raising it up. And there we go. And I can actually see already that the chain that's going in is dirtier than the chain that's coming out. So it's definitely doing a job of cleaning it out. So that's definitely not nothing. So maybe <clears throat> put some more in. Again, the problem is that I have this kind of stuff. I could probably use uh, kerosene or whatever, just get it from the construction supply store. It would be cheaper and I can just load up this bottle and really have as much of it as I need to. Uh, you do go through a lot of aerosol chain cleaner. It's expensive. And if I was just using my grunge brush, I would be kind of using a lot of it anyway. So it doesn't really matter. But I do feel a little bit, a little bit bad just kind of putting it in the bottle because it does get out of the bottle like very quickly. Like, uh, I, don't, I don't know how you could kind of fill up this entire bottle. But, this is how it works. I don't need to squeeze the bottle. Um, the chain cleaner just goes into the, uh, the Ketten Max. Um, it's kind of a vacuum effect. Pulling it in. And here it is. And it's actually um, gone through a few circuits now. And it is going in quite nicely. Yep, and it is working on all sides of the chain. Uh, both sides, the side that I can see, the side that I cannot see. Using my grunge brush would not be better, honestly. So yeah, um, this does seem like a pretty effective and simple way to clean a chain. Um, definitely doing a better job than just a power washer which I've done like I know people might scream at me and say like don't use a power washer on your chain but I've done it like guilty um, and I would say it's easier than the, than the brush um, it's easier for me um, next time I'll probably get some uh, some kerosene some liquid liquid cleaner to uh, not worry about how much of the spray I'm using. I uh, got something cheap. You can use WD-40 as well, I think. And that's actually it. So, uh, I will just use my little thingy here to clean off the chain as it is coming out. Clean up all the excess and you can see that the chain is now nice and golden, nice and clean and beautiful. This is just a microfiber uh, microfiber cloth. You can like, get a three pack of these from the from the shop it's like from a supermarket for like a couple of euros. So I'm not really worried about uh, getting it dirty, but I will um, 
probably throw in the wash and I expect it'll come out pretty decently clean. I have used it before and I have put it in the, in the wash and in the clean before. Just getting caught. So now while I'm out here, might as well look at the state of my rear sprocket and it seems to be doing just fine. Yep, there's, there's a decent amount of life left on it. Chain slack is also fine. Right, so next stop is to use the other bit uh, to put some chain lubricant on it. And let me just get it out of the top box. Every thousand kilometers or every time it rains. Every time you ride in the rain, the stuff gets off your chain. So now I'm going to put, this is chain uh, lube. I'm going to put this into here and just spray some. And as I'm spraying it, I can see that it is going onto the chain here. Um, this is the kind of stuff that has a white sheen, so uh, I can tell that it is actually staying on the chain. And again, you can use, obviously, uh, some kind of liquid. Um, I've used chain wax, I've used chain paste. Um, I found that chain paste is terrible. Um, it does not work. Well, this is all for road bikes. Um, so this is, uh, this is Moto, but like others are available. I'm not married to this particular brand, but it's what they have at the shop here and it is good. Right. So, uh, that is it. So I take off the tube now. This uh, can of dirty stuff uh, that's just getting thrown out. Um, take off the hooks, unhook this, put it all back in the box, and I am gone with my nice clean chain, clean and freshly lubricated chain, and I am ready for my big trip to Norway. Thanks!